what message will you be taking back to London and Parliament after your day in Cornwall? I think, first of all, because Cornwall has received a lot of funding from uh, European regional development funds and the social fund, very clear message is that is coming to an end because we're leaving. What's going to replace it? Uh, because it's been very important to the investment in infrastructure in Cornwall and there's a clear vision for the future of the economy which the business community and the council have put together but you do need resources to make sure that you can have the right infrastructure to attract new investment and to make the most of the opportunities there are when you think about geothermal energy or the wave hub or the recent discovery of, of lithium or the tech sector um, you need infrastructure to encourage people in. I think the second thing we're going to take away, and it's reflected in all other parts of the country, EU workers who have come and contributed to the local economy. How is that going to work? Obviously, ensuring those who are here can stay, but there's agreement on that. We've just got to persuade everybody in Europe to do that and protect the Brits who are working elsewhere in Europe. But what kind of immigration system are we going to operate once we've left, when free movement comes to an end, to ensure that people can, are still there to serve us tea and coffee and meals in, in hotels and restaurants, picking daffodils, caring for us in intensive care units, all of the things that workers who've come from the EU have contributed to, along with all of our wonderful homegrown talent. And I think the third uh, thing is that I think there's a cry for devolution, because in this process, particularly as powers come back from Europe, regulations, there will be a decision about what sits in Westminster and what might be passed down. And we got a strong message today, can you give us more of the tools and then we promise you we'll get on and do the job. Of course, you've been to other parts of the UK, yeah. like Ab Aberdeen, where they're very interested in oil, sure. Sunderland, where they're very interested yeah. in cars. There are competing and conflicting interests within the UK. How are you going to hold the ring between all of those diverse well, interests? Well, uh, different parts of the country have got different strengths and, of course, uh, each of them plays to those strengths. One other thing that we've heard in common from everyone is this. At the moment, Europe is our largest single market, 44% of our exports, no tariffs, no barriers to trade. That's what the single market, internal market, is all about. Nobody wants to go back to tariffs and obstacles. That was a very clear message from the business community, including agriculture, very important to the economy of Cornwall today. How are we going to arrive at a, a, a Brexit package which pleases everybody? Well, the government will obviously be seeking to get the best deals for all these sectors. I mean, you're right, uh, in Cornwall we haven't just been hearing about fishing and farming. Obviously, tourism, hugely important industry, which I used to have responsibility for in government. Uh, also, some of the small firms operating here. Um, but we will be obviously trying to look after the interests of British companies so that they can continue to trade as freely as possible in Europe, but also helping them build new markets. What was your message to the Select Committee? Well, I think the message is that Cornwall is doing the work. Uh, and we've looked at the risks and we've looked at the opportunities. And most importantly, we are doing this as Cornwall, so that we are representing the widest view of Cornwall in terms of its approach to uh, life post-Brexit.